but we have a nice video to share with our school community. All right, it is recording. Welcome, Mrs. Havilland and Ms. Parascovitis classes. I am thrilled to introduce our author, illustrator, community member, uh, parent, grandparent, and, we, and recently we learned he's a great grandparent, um, among many other things. So welcome to Mr. Pinckney. They are all yours. Well, good morning, and thank you for that introduction, uh, Mr. Cohen. Um, now, you have on the screen two images, and so I'm going to speak about, there will be others to follow. Uh, but the first two um, on the left, that's a, a self-portrait of me as a cowboy. And um, by the way, I didn't talk about that, but oftentimes in my books, I actually model for the characters. And um, in this case, so this is a, a project I did with the Eric Carle Museum. And um, it was about when I was a kid growing up and we went to the movies to see Westerns and I loved them. And me and my buddies always got together and we played cowboys. So I thought I'm doing a self portrait. Why don't I think back on those earlier days when I was so in love with Westerns and, and, and do a portrait of myself uh, as a cowboy. So I was able to play uh, cowboys again, this time as an adult. Um, the images here, both of them, that's the, a ship on, on the, a freighter from the 1820s. Um, a lot of my work will span great lengths of time. Uh, this is a book called The Welcome Chair. Both of these images, again, uh, are in, in watercolor, and I'll share a little bit about that later with my tools. Next slide. Um, I do a lots and lots of work. Now, you probably know of my art uh, through the picture books that you've read that are in the library. But I, have do, I do other things as well. And on, so on the left there is an album cover um, it was an album used to be a, um, uh, for covers for records. We have CDs and DVDs now, but when I was um, a young man, we had, of course, uh, records. And this was an album cover uh, for classical music. By the way, you'll see, I love all kinds of music, but this was for a classical um, uh, album. And the uh, composer was Mahler. And you'll learn about Mahler, I think, at some point. On the right, <clears throat> I often asked about a favorite illustration of mine. And, and I have many, of course. But this one would be on the top of my list. It's a book jacket or a cover for a picture book that I collaborated on with the author, Julius Lester. And the title is the legend of John Henry. And when I was a kid growing up, by the way, we didn't have a lot of books at home, but we had um, we had some, mainly from Aesop's Fables and Hans Christian Andersen, but other stories, by the way, were introduced to us kids by someone telling the story. Someone to actually tell it as opposed to read it. And that really got me very, very excited. Next uh, group of slides, please. Um, I do serious work. Um, I do very humorous work at times. And I sometimes I just want to have fun. And on the left, you see that giraffe. This was for a, um, a reading magazine about how to get people interested in reading. And I thought, oh, I would do this drawing of a, a giraffe. And, uh, you know, the giraffe has these patterns and it has this tall neck and and I thought, well, why don't I take the pattern? So if you look very, very closely, those brown patches of color, a pattern, are actually books. And I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool because it's kind of an illustration where you look at it and you see them as just um, spots or a pattern, and then you look closer in their books. So that's you, you, a little bit of humor, but that's the part that is so most fascinating for me as an artist, that I can do so many things and express so many things. On the right is from Aesop's Fables. And again, that's a story that was read to me. My mother loved to read um, the fables and, and, um, and fairy tales. And that was when 
that I really caught my attention and it was called The Boy Who Cried Wolf and see if you can spot the wolf in that illustration. Next slide. Um, the one on the left, again, talking about serious subject matter, and that one's a little bit more serious. And it's um, a, a, a book cover for a, um, a novel called Run With Horses. Um, um, and so it's a powerful story about Native, a Native American young warrior and on the right, now I've been talking all along about my work being in watercolor, pencil and watercolor on paper. But on the right, the pheasant there is done in pastel. And I'm going to share with you through um, a sort of a short demo how I work with pastel. And pastel is chalk. You guys have all held a piece of chalk in your hand, right? Well, that drawing was created with chalk. So I'm going to start this morning with a reading from a very favorite book of mine. I read it yesterday, but I want to share it with you. It's a poem by Thylas Moss, and it's called I Want to Be. And I looked at I picked it up this morning, and I said, oh, I wonder who I dedicated this book to. Now, when you pick up a book, check and see the author and the illustrator all dedicates the, a book to uh, it could be uh, a person or persons. Um, and in this case, this is kind of cool. Uh, and they're usually uh, found in the front of the book, uh, occasionally in the back. And this one is dedicated to, uh, in memory of my mother, Willie May, who encouraged me to be an artist. It was my mother who really became my sort of cheerleader when I was very young and I didn't see, we didn't have role models of other artists in our family or in the neighborhood, uh, in my community. So uh, I needed a lot of encouragement. So this is a book by the poet Thylas Moss. I love poetry. And um, uh, so we collaborated. What's collaboration? Well, you guys probably do it within the classroom. Right, you work with along with another student. That's a collaboration. It could be one student, it could be two or three or more. But um, and in this case, Thylias, um is the writer, so she wrote the poem, and then I illustrated. That's my was my job. So I'll just share parts of this book um, with you, and it's all about. Well, it says the title says it all really. I want to be. So it's a perfect book for you guys because you're in school, you're trying to figure out what am I going to be when I get to be an adult, right? That's the whole purpose of education to be prepared for that. So this is a young girl who's trying to figure out what she wants to be. Today, a lady, a man, another lady, another man, and my friend asked me, what do I want to be? I thought and thought they were tired of waiting. And I said, I'll just tell you tomorrow. I bet you guys have aunts and grandparents and they say, what do you want to be, right? Do you ever get that question? What do you want to be? Okay. Now remember, this is a poem. So the, the language itself and the words are very magical. I walked home slowly. I kicked up rocks and dirt that filled the air like tiny butterflies. They held a handful of river water. Then I let go of it above my head like rain. Now, I just, I didn't realize this, but see this guy watering flowers? Who does that look like? I posed. So sometimes look very carefully. You might just recognize me uh, posing as one of the characters. I licked a patch of sunlight on my arm. I played hopscotch in footprints after I made them. I made a grass mustache, a dandelion beard, and a bird's nest toupee.
The wind was a magician and it turned me into a dancer. I danced until I was dizzy and the sky turned into a lake. So I stood on my head and was a fish swimming in it. Again, using the imagination, using the imagination. I double dutch with strands of rainbow. Then I fastened the strands to my hair and my toes and became a fiddle that sunbeams played. Then I sang with an oxygen choir. Now I'm gonna to skip to the back of the book and get close to the end. Oh, I, I, I love this one. Uh, I want to be still, but not so still that I turn into a mannequin or get mistaken for a tree. I want to be in motion, but I want the ants in my pants to sometimes take a vacation. Sometimes I want to be slow, but not so slow that everything passes me by. Now, I'm going to go to the back of the book, and I love this passage, and see what it reminds you of, right? Has a lot to do with us all learning to live together. I want to be all the people I know that I want to know more people so I can be them too. Then they can all be me. I want to be a new kind of earthquake rocking the world as if it's a baby in a cradle. And I love this illustration with all the different peoples represented there. I want to be eyes looking, looking everywhere. I want to be ears hearing, hearing everything. I want to be hands touching, touching everything. I want to be mouth tasting, tasting everything. I want to be heart feeling, feeling everything. I want to be life doing, doing everything. That's all. So she wants to be curious, right? She wants to be curious. She wants to be able to use her imagination. Now, I want to briefly touch on a process of how I make my go about making my books. So I talked about, you know, collaborating, right? And that's me with, and so most of my work that you see in the library and um, we'll be collaborating with another person and that person would be the author. Now, I in, in the last 10 years, I started with writing as well. And I most of those books, uh, Attempt at Writing, uh, really are adapting stories that were important to me when I was growing up. And uh, But every project, most every project, and I've illustrated over 100 books, start with a text. That's the story. Someone has to write the story, all right? And then the publisher who decides to publish that story will come to me. And my role, of course, is the illustrator. The illustrator's role is to interpret the text. Um, so I would be asked to illustrate a, a, a story, and if I liked it and I wanted to do it, because it's important that I enjoy what I do and that I think that the work is important, uh, I say, yes, they send me a manuscript. What's a manuscript? Well, it's a, a typewritten text of the story. So that's the manuscript. So they send me the manuscript, but with no ideas at all, uh, suggestions about what I am um, to illustrate. Now, there's a size to the book, number of pages, but in terms of what the subject matters is going to be, it's really up to me. So. Um, so I would take that text and um, I do what you call thumbnail sketches. Now, I'll give you an example. I'll show it in front. 
these are thumbnail sketches. And you see here, this is the text. In this case, uh, it's also another poem by Nikki Grimes. And, um, and these drawings on the side, you can see, are quite small. And those are the thumbnail sketches. And what is a thumbnail sketch? It's a very quick shorthand for deciding or exploring possibilities. In other words, I don't know if this is going to work or not. So I'm, let me try and see, uh, give you, let me see if I can work out different possibilities. That's a good way of putting it, by the way, is that these thumbnails give me an opportunity to actually pursue different possibilities without this huge commitment of a block of time. So <clears throat> these are thumbnail sketches and you'll see, I do a lots of them. And then, um, and so each, usually each block of text or passage of text that I decide to illustrate, then what I will do is uh, I'll do a, a number of ideas. So these are thumbnail sketches, do that for the whole book. And most of my books run about 40 pages. Now, once that's done, and I've, I've got plenty of ideas to choose from, the next step, what we call a dummy book. A dummy book is a model for, um, for a project. And um, uh, what I do is I take a sheet, I decide on the size, then I take uh, sheets of paper um, and I cut them out twice the size, of the book, and then I fold those sheets uh, in half, and I create what is kind of like like a book. So how do I hold it together? There's lots of ways. This particular dummy book, and I'll show you the, the the first page. I just take a rubber band, and I put it around it, and it holds it together. So it feels like a book that you get out of the library. So it's pretty kind of cool. Sometimes I actually will stitch it, sew it. Uh, I have different different ways of, of doing that. And then I look at those thumbnail sketches, right? I got all these possibilities, but I'm wondering what are they, what are they gonna look like, the size I want them to be in. And then I'm also zeroing in and what really I want to happen. So I'll sh start sharing a couple of things. And I really take that blank member when I start, it's blank and i take the blank book and i draw in it in this case i'm using markers there are drawing markers i'll share those with you as well and i began to develop the book that's the title page every book has to have a title page and then some of the opening spreads okay so uh, a quick story about when i met my first artist and then we're going to do a, a studio tour um, so I met my, I met my first professional artist. I was at age of 13, took my first job. I was selling newspapers at a very busy newsstand in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And, uh, I loved drawing when I was a kid growing up. So I always, I always had a sketchbook, uh, or something I could draw on. But at the time I took the job selling newspapers. Um, it was sketchbooks. My dad bought me sketchbooks. And then sometimes with the salary uh, that I made selling newspapers, I would buy sketchbooks. And I always, so I always had a sketchbook. And, um, and I loved, loved the idea of drawing. So I would take a sketchbook to work with me selling newspapers. And um, one day, one of my customers, whose name, his name was John Liney. And he was a cartoonist of a comic strip. And he asked if I would um, share my drawings, which I did. And he looked at them and he commented on them. And he said, Jerry, <laughs> he said, Jerry, my studio is right up the street. How would you like to come and visit? And of course, I, it was my first artist. And he, Mr. Liney, is inviting me up to his studio. And I said, of course. So one day I arrived at work really super, super early. And I went up the street and I went into his studio. And I can't tell you how exciting it was. First of all, having an artist, a professional artist, invite me into the studio. 
and uh, I was able to see his work table and his tools and ideas. It was just fantastic. So, would you like to visit my studio? <laughs> okay. All right. So first I'll show you my, right behind me is my work table. And I do kind of ideas here. I do most of my painting uh, on this table. And um, so this you'll see is my tabaret. Now what's a tabaret? That's where an artist keeps his tools. And so you'll see my palette here. Um, my This is for watercolor. And you'll see all of my drawing tools. So, um, uh, Mr. Cohen, if I'm not pointing this directly where I'm, what I'm talking about, let me know, please. Um, so, so far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. So I work with. Remember, I mentioned markers. I just shared you some drawings with the markers. Okay, that's a marker. Most of my work <clears throat> is done in pencil, and of course, these are the brushes all the different kinds of brushes. I love showing these. And each brush serves a different purpose. That's a flat brush, watercolor brush. I love this one. Whoops. That's called a watercolor round. That's fluffy. Okay. So that's all the different brushes. And I never know exactly which brush I'm going to use. I have lots and lots of books. And here you will see a library, one of my libraries, each of my bookcases has a uh, sections in it uh, that, uh, in this case, it's the whole actually shelving is is uh, 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 are, are books about other artists that I find a, um, I'm interested in and I want to know more about them. These are some portraits, by the way. Mr. Cohen mentioned my great granddaughter. That's my great daughter, granddaughter Zion. She's actually going to be 14 in May. So I'll share some other things there. Uh, I work at two work tables, uh, two workstations. One where, I, again, I do a lot of this sort of idea stages, and I also do my painting. Um, there's a second work table. And um, this work table here is where I do my, what you call a working drawing. And I'll just share with you on the desk. This, these drawings are done actually in pass um, and on tracing paper and they're done in pencil. And this is a drawing I would do before I start the finished book. And what do I mean by a finished book? It's what you see when you actually uh, get a book from the library of mine. So um, by the way, um, most of my books are published and printed in China. And I just got these boxes from China yesterday. That's artwork. That's a book that just came back from the printer. So, okay. Uh, you'll see I have, I call studio friends. My studio friends are plants and you'll see lots of them. And you'll also see um, um, my music section. And speaking of studio friends, this is my studio friend as well. That's Caddy. Caddy. Yeah. Yeah, he's my studio buddy. Yeah, he loves it down here. So, and she has his own chair. This is my writing table. Uh, this is where I do all my writing and also pay, have to pay bills because what I do is a business. That's my bike. I have to ride a bike to keep exercise, right? And then behind it, the library there and the shelving of books are all on nature. And by the way, this is half of the books I have that are on nature. That outside room is where I do, I work usually work on a computer and you'll see other uh, shelving of, of books. And most of those books are uh, of, about other artists. Now, this is a project I'm working on. I've been working on this project now. It's a memoir. It's about how I became an artist and uh, the importance of the imagination. So I've been working on this for uh, close to eight years now um, and uh, off and on, off and on. And it will be about, again, um, around the age of 10, 12, and 13 when I really began to realize that 
the art um, is really what I wanted to do. Art was my dream. So each project uh, I usually I tend to keep organized. This is the memoir. This is the book where I shared um, the uh, thumbnail sketches on nature and the poem with Nikki Grimes. So that is, so I don't want to put books back if I need them. So I keep everything at hand so, um, so that um, it's close by and I'm not spending a lot of time uh, just looking um, uh, up things again and again and again. So um, just closets of, that's where I store my art. And we're gonna take some time and I'm gonna share with you through a demo the project that I'm working on for your school. And it's uh, a pastel drawing of the school mascot, which is a eagle, a bald eagle. We have lots of eagles. By the way, I was outside putting out the trash this morning and I heard all this racket, all this noise. It wasn't an eagle, it was a, it was a crow. I, I still amazes me how large they are or they can grow. It was huge. I mean, I thought it was something else. Anyway, this is, remember I talked about most of my work is in, in watercolor and paper. This is uh, again, a pastel and I'll share, this is a kind of another um, tab array where I keep my tools. This one's on wheels so I can move it around and to any spot in the studio. And um, so what I do in most cases, I work from reference. What is reference for me? It's a visual reference um, and it's photographs. And remember I shared with you the, the library of books and I tend to use books all the time. Um, also now, of course, using Google. And maybe I'll share a little bit of that with you. But this is um, a drawing that I started and, it's, and I sort of documented it in stages because the first class where I started this demo uh, was on Tuesday. And the first drawing was in line. So I'm gonna angle this so that you have room to, so you can see what's going on. And I'm gonna work on this a little bit and then um, we can um, also uh, think about possible questions. So, okay. so I'm gonna start going over some questions while he works uh, that you shared, but if there's something not answered, this is a time to put it in the chat. Remember, we're gonna stay on mute. You can put it in the chat. First question, did you have a teacher that really made a difference in your life? Oh, I did. I had a number of teachers, but the first teacher I think that was most important to me was actually in about um, uh, about second or third grade and was Mrs. Miller. And um, when I was, again, when I was very young, I struggled with, I'm dyslexic. So, and so when I was in school, uh, I lagged far behind the other, my other fellow students in reading, but, but in, that was in the 1940s, they didn't understand dyslexia. Dyslexia. They didn't really understand uh, like a learning disability or a learning difference. So uh, it was Mrs. Miller who realized that I really wanted to learn. It was just taking me a lot longer. So Mrs. Miller, when she knew I loved drawing, she made me the class artist. And so I was able to participate oftentimes in a class project uh, by, by drawing a drawing or creating something. So she was first. And then I had a number of drawing instructors uh, in college that became important. And, oh, I should mention this, my high school teacher. I had terrific teachers, but I think a lot of it also had to do was I was always a very good student. Even though I had challenges, I was a very good student. So I'm thinking now, that's a good question, that did I actually attract very good teachers because I really wanted to show that I wanted to learn? So I had a number of them, but that's a good question. Another question from Griffin is, what's the hardest picture you drew? 
the hardest picture I drew was a picture. There's a, a, a book I, I illustrated. It's a Hans Christian Andersen um, book story. And it's called The Little Match Girl. And in it, there's a whole st street scenes with hundreds of people. Well, maybe not a hundred, but a lot of people. And that was hard to do for me. Uh, I have a hard time sometimes drawing crowds, even though I keep trying and, and I'm getting better at it. So that was one of the hardest. Jonathan wants to know um, if you could talk about a book you created by yourself. Oh, well, the first one um, would be the one that maybe you guys know. And that book is uh, The um, uh, Lion and the Mouse. That um, is it's almost it's really close to a wordless picture book. But that was a book. That was my idea. I, 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 want, I loved that story, and I loved it as a kid, and, and I really still love that story. And so I created that picture book. So that was that was that was the first one. How, uh, how many books did you create with words in them? That comes from Emma. Oh gosh, I've illustrated over um, over a hundred books, and most of those books have a text. I started writing, of course, about 10 years ago. So uh, maybe, I don't know what the number is, but the 10 or 12 out of those hundreds is where I also created the text itself. Eric's wondering about your favorite drawing. Oh, I'm, I, if just to um, sort of um, give you an idea, because you've seen this drawing before, because it was on the screen earlier. It was that cover of the legend of John Henry. I think of, of all of, I keep responding to that every time I see it. And I think it has a lot to do with that it was important for me. Uh, it was an important story as a, as a, a, um, a young man growing up. Uh, he, actually, John Henry is my superhero. Uh, Marshall wants to, talk, if you could share about your ship story. My, that is from a book by, you guys probably you know the author. No, I said, did you ever make a ship story? Everybody say, oh, you did please. Did I ever make a ship story? Not really. There have been ships in projects, you know, like the one that I shared earlier, um, the welcome cheer, but not a book entirely about a ship. Uh, Gabe's wondering about your favorite author. Uh, I have a number of them, but I worked with Julius Lester. We did almost um, 10 projects together. He would be on the top of my list. Um, I would be, uh, I, I have to say, I've collaborated with my wife, Gloria Jean, on four projects. So she's a favorite author. But I have lots. Griffin asked the best book you ever wrote. Oh, I, I love the new book. And it's the um, uh, Little Mermaid. It's um, sort of inspired by... Hans Christian Andersen and Disney's Little Mermaid. I think that is important. That's going. To, that's an important book. It's also new, and there's something about having a new book that you're excited about. Jonathan asked about your favorite color to draw with. Um, if you notice my drawings, there's usually a brown line. Um, I'll, I'll show you. And I'll just draw in a little bit. See that color? You will see that color in a lot of my images. And it's a very neutral color. I like that color. And I kind of draw with it. Michael asked about how intense was it to create a book without words? Um, oh, and here's an interesting story about that. Well, when I first started that, the idea was that it wasn't, wasn't going to be wordless. I was going to do the drawings and then add the text later. 
because I knew the story so well. And then after I did this sort of a storyboard, the thumbnails, I said, wait a minute. This is reading okay without words. So, and what's interesting about that is once when that was very successful. So, um, so we thought, okay, so why don't we do it? We since it's successful, why don't we do another wordless book? And guess what? I couldn't make it work. And we tried and we tried, and finally. We gave up, and um, so the next book was, the next fable was the a tortoise and the hare, the tortoise and the hare. And the tortoise and the hare uh, is not wordless, but it only has the uh, moral, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, Joanne is asking about was having dyslexia hard when you were little. It was especially so because I no one recognized it when I was um, you know very young and and uh, experiences a challenge and difficulty in reading for me. Uh, there was no word like dyslexia, so they didn't have it wasn't diagnosed. They didn't have a label. They didn't understand it. So, and without them understanding it, they had no remedies for me. So they didn't know how to set up a program that would help me at the time. And so that was very hard because we didn't know what was wrong. We just knew that I couldn't, somehow words were difficult for me to decipher. And that was the hardest part of not knowing. Sophia is wondering how many sketchbooks you have. Oh, once we go over to the other desk, uh, I'll, I have probably about about fifteen or so. Guess what? My son, who's an artist, he has I don't know how many sketchbooks. He loves sketchbooks, and he fills them up, and he starts all over again. But I have about I guess about. Um, about about 12 that I finished. So you notice today with this illustration, this part, I'm sort of blocking in the color. The first couple of, of sessions, I was uh, really kind of drawing an outline and getting the silhouette right. Here, I'm sort of blocking in these sort of areas of color. We got One five. of our third grade students, Daniel, wants to know if you remember your third grade teacher's name and maybe want to talk about third grade specifically, like all our friends here. Oh, well, we in 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 um, in Hill Elementary School. That's where I went to um, um, uh, school, elementary school, and we had uh, we didn't have like a lot of teachers, so the teachers would. Um, um, double in with subject matters like Mr. Uh, Abel. He was history and applied arts, they called it at the time, and um, mechanical drawing and things like that. Uh, Mrs. Miller, uh, she taught English and composition and all that kind of stuff. And she, so she was really important. And I think at third grade for me was when, of course, reading became important. Mater you know, material changed and you had less guidance from teachers and um, more that you had to do on your own. And Mrs. Miller was terrific with me. And I really credit Mrs. Miller for giving me my confidence. Um, she was terrific. Before we go any further, I want to—I don't want to forget this. This is a book, the Sunday outing by Gloria Jean Pinkney. That's my wife, Gloria Jean. This is Duke Gellington's story by Andrea Davis Pinkney, illustrated by Brian Pinkney. So it's my son and my daughter-in-law. And let's see what, it, oh, everything just came click, caving in down here. So this is super special. 
This is Just Like My Mama by Charnel Pinkney Barlow. That's my granddaughter. This is her first book. It was published last year. Isn't that terrific? So we got a bunch of Pinkneys doing books. Um, that's good. Oh, I want to just point out, uh, this is my new book, and it's The Little Mermaid. You guys know the story of Little Mermaid, right? Yeah, okay. So this is my version. Very, very different. Anyway, good. So more questions. Summer asks, how'd you learn to do so well with art? Um, first of all, I love it. And, and when you love something, you work very hard at it. So, and the other thing that I know, and this is true of, of most of the arts, music or acting, and it, but there are, when I say arts, I mean, even in terms of learning about history or science, when you love something, there's more to learn about that something. And the more you learn about that something, the more you want to learn. And so that the hard part uh, is more like it's a challenge. And, but it's a challenge that um, is very rewarding at the end. Because all of you guys, you've passed the test or you've come close to achieving something that you hadn't achieved yesterday but you're achieving it today, it feels good, right? And so if it feels good, you want more of that. But sometimes more of that means more work or harder work or more challenging work, but then there's the reward. So that has a lot to do with um, uh, me being, and by the way, I've been doing this for 60 years and I still am excited about it. We have a couple uh, animal questions, Michael and Dakota. Um, one is your favorite animal to draw, and another is do you like to draw animals in some books like the eagle you're drawing? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, um, this is somebody asked about my sketchbooks, and this is a one I'm working on now, and that this is sketchbook of just um, animals. Now the question was was twofold. One was about animals, correct? Do I love the, what's my favorite animal? Um, I don't think I have a favorite animal. Um, I don't. I think that uh, it's always amazing to me when I'm drawing an animal I've never drawn before. And because the animal was fascinating to me and I wanna know more about it through drawing, it becomes my favorite animal at the time. So, so, so imagine that in this book, which is all about animals, each time I approach a drawing, I must admit that I love that fox drawing. The fox are great. Um, and by the way, I could sit on my deck of my studio out here and, um, and uh, there was a, a fox path that was run by. And I, I haven't seen them in a while, uh, but I would see that a fox. It was really up close. So. Um, each, and I think that's the, the beauty of um, making things, that every time you make something, that something that you've made becomes your favorite. And I'm very fortunate because I have lots of lots of favorites because I like to do lots and lots of different things. Yeah. I think we could probably get one more in and then, you know, um, I'll talk about the community night a little bit later. Avril okay. was curious, your favorite part of writing a book? Um, oh, because writing is hard. My favorite part of writing a book is when it's finished. Um, and uh, because of, you know, I don't like to use the word hard, but writing is still very challenging for me. Um, but, um, and I'm working on some things now and I mentioned the, the memoir, I'm rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. Um, and so um, it's it's some partly um, it's rewarding, but it's partly relief a relief when I do uh, finish something that it's, it's that it's accepted as well done. Um, I just want to share this one with you. This big because this is uh, of all the books you guys probably not familiar with. This one 
and this is a pop-up book. And speaking of animals, it's called Strange Animals of the, of the Sea. And I'd love this book. But again, you talk about this, of all the projects that I've done, really was very difficult to do. But in that difficulty, it was really incredibly rewarding. So how about that, guys? So what did you learn today? <laughs> that at work, hard work is rewarding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. I got some well, thumbs up there. Thank me. Um, we, on behalf of Ms. Haviland and Ms. Paris Cave's class, thank you for the time. Um, we are setting up one evening so that you know families and students can join for one final session with Mr. Pinckney. So stay tuned for that. Um, I know um, we're going to be sending some kinds of thank you cards and students. If you want to take pictures of your work and include it, um, I love. They would love to see it. So um, everybody, do a nice wave to Mr. Pinckney. Thank you very much. Hey guys. See you. All right. Take care. <laughs>